College Algebra, Module 9, Topic 9.1, Combining Functions. Recall that a function, f of x, is a rule that assigns to every x value in the domain one and only one y value. In terms of function notation, remember that f of x is the notation that we use for a function f with a variable x. Just as real numbers can be added, subtracted, multiplied, and divided, we can do the same for functions. Let's cover some definitions first. Given two functions, f and g, then for all values of x for which both f of x and g of x are defined, the functions f plus g, f minus g, f times g, and f divided by g are defined as follows. The sum of two functions, the function f plus g of x, is the same thing as f of x plus g of x. The function f minus g of x is the same as f of x minus g of x. The product f times g of x can be found by multiplying f of x times g of x and the quotient f over g of x can be found by doing f of x divided by g of x. Now let's go back and talk about domain for a second. The domain of a function is the set of all x values that will produce a real number y value or a real function value. In most cases, the domain is the set of all real numbers except for the following. You can never have a zero in the denominator of a fraction. So when we talk about the function f of x over g of x, then it's understood that g of x cannot be equal to zero. You can also not have a negative under an even root. Remember we said the square root of a negative is an imaginary number. Therefore, we need to eliminate any values of x that would make a negative value under an even root. We're okay for odd roots. And then thirdly, the number must make sense in an application. So if we're talking about f of t, where t is the number of months, then it's understood that t has to be greater than or equal to zero. The domain of the first three functions is the intersection of the domains of f and g, while the domain of f over g is the intersection of the domains of f and g for which g of x is not equal to zero. That is, the domain for the sum, difference, and product function includes values that are common in both of the original functions. However, the domain for the quotient function cannot have any value or values that make the denominator zero. Objective one, performing operations on functions. Let f of x be x squared plus one and g of x equal three x plus two. Find the domain for f and g and then find each of the following. Well, the domain of f, because there's no fractions, no square roots, domain of f is all real numbers. Same thing for g of x, because there's no fractions, no square roots, the domain of g is all real numbers. So the domain for all these functions is going to be all real numbers. Okay, let's find f plus g of one. Well, by definition, this means f of 1 plus g of 1. Well, f of 1 means go into your f function everywhere you had an x, plug in 1. So f of 1 is going to be 1 squared plus 1, which is 2. g of 1 means go into your g function everywhere you had an x, plug in 1. So we would get 3 times 1 plus 2 which is 5. So if f of 1 is 2 and g of 1 is 5,
then f plus g of 1 would be 7. Let's do another one. f times g of 5. Well, by definition, this means f of 5 times g of 5. Well, f of 5 means go into your f function, x squared plus 1. Everywhere you had an x, plug in 5, so we would get 26. g of 5 means go into g, substitute 5, so we get 3 times 5 plus 2, which is 17. And then f of 5 times g of 5 would be 26 times 17, and we would get 442. Then f divided by g of 0 means f of 0 divided by g of 0. Well, again, f of 0 is the value you get when you substitute 0 in for x, which would give us 0 squared plus 1, which is 1. g of 0 is 3 times 0 plus 2, which is 2. So f of 0 divided by g of 0 is 1 half. All right, let's do another example. Let f of x equal 8x minus 3, and g of x equal the square root of 2x minus 1. Find each of the following and give the domain. Now this one's a little bit different because they don't give us specific values of x to plug in for. Let's start out. The domain of f, there's no fractions, no square roots, so the domain of f is all real numbers. G of x, however, has a square root, and you can't have a negative number under a square root. So we say, well, we want the radicand, or 2x minus 1, to be greater than or equal to 0. Well, when we solve that for x, we get 2x is greater than or equal to 1. Dividing by 2 tells us that x has to be greater than or equal to 1 half. So when we look at our number line, Domain of f is all real numbers. Domain of g is everything to the right of 1 half. So when we look at the intersection of f and g, the domain is going to be for all real numbers greater than or equal to 1 half. Now f minus g of x means we're going to do f of x minus g of x. Well, when we substitute in, we get 8x minus 3 minus the square root of 2x minus 1. Well, to subtract polynomials, remember you leave the first one the same and change the sign of everything after the square root. Well, this one is just going to be 8x minus 3 minus the square root of 2x minus 1. When we look at the quotient, f divided by g of x, that is f of x, divided by g of x, which is 8x minus 3, divided by the square root of 2x minus 1. Now this is the function. Now let's go back and talk for a second about the domain. We said earlier that x is greater than or equal to 1 half. Well, if x is equal to 1 half, then the g function is going to equal 0. Because it's in the denominator, it can't equal zero, so we say that the domain is the set of all x's greater than one-half, okay? Note that it's not equal to one-half because that would put a zero in the denominator. Let's do another example. Let f of x equal 4x squared and g of x equal 4x to the third minus 8x squared. The domain of f, because there's no fractions, no square roots, is all real numbers. The domain of g, there's no fractions, no square roots, all real numbers. So when we look at f times g of x, well that's f of x times g of x, the domain is going to be the intersection of those, which is still going to be all real numbers. But what we're going to do now, because they don't give us a specific value, is we are going to multiply 
our f of x times our g of x. Well, to simplify that, we're going to use distributive property. So we would get 16x to the fifth minus 32x to the fourth. And again, the domain is all real numbers. f plus g of x, well, by definition, that means f of x plus g of x, which would be 4x squared plus 4x to the cube minus 8x squared. So when we combine like terms, we've got 4x to the third is our only third term. 4x squared minus 8x squared would be negative 4x squared. And again, domain is all real numbers. Objective two, evaluating from a graph. This time we're gonna find each of the following if possible. Well, f minus g of negative two means f of negative two minus g of negative two. Well, f of negative two, because we don't have a formula to substitute into, means you find the y value when x is negative two. So if you look at your graph where x is negative two, that's back one, back two, to find the green line, you come down here. The green line is the F line. So on the green line, when X is negative two, the Y value is negative three. So F of negative two is negative three minus G of negative two. When you look at G of negative two, you notice when X is negative two, there is no pink line, therefore, there was not a value for g of negative two. So this example is not possible. Okay, let's do another one. This time we're gonna do f times g of one. Well, that means f of one times g of one. Well, f is the green function. f of one means you look on the green line where x value is one, which means you go up and it's gonna be right there at three. So f of one is three times g of one. G is the pink line, so when the x value is one, the y value is also one. So g of one is three, so three times one is three. F divided by g means f of zero divided by g of zero. Well, f of zero is the green line where x is zero. So if x is zero, you look up here and the y value is one, so f of zero is one. g of zero is down here at zero. Well, you cannot have a one divided by zero, therefore this one is not possible either. Now let's talk about composition of functions. If f and g are functions, then the composite function or composition of g and f is written as g of f of x, meaning g of f of x. So we can use the little circle for the composition, which means g is a function of f. So we would take whatever f is and plug that into the g function. And this is true for all x in the domain of f, such that f of x is in the domain of g. Now let me walk you through this graph. This first circle is the domain of f. Okay, this is all possible x values for the domain of f. Well then this is the f function. So if you take any x that's in the domain of f and plug it into the f formula, then you get the range of f. Okay, so everything in this big circle right here is the range of f, or we call that f of x. Then the way the composition works is you take these values that are in the range of f, you substitute those into the g function, and what comes out is now the range of g, or the composition function g of f of x. Now in terms of function composition, g of f of x means this, 
f of g of x means this. Now notice that the order of the variable stayed the same. g of f, so g is on the outside, f is on the inside. Then when we do f of g, f is on the outside, g is on the inside. But note that g of f does not equal f of g, meaning it matters which order you do these functions in. Objective 3, evaluating compositions. So if f of x is 2x minus 1, and g of x is 4 over x minus 1, find f of g of 2. We'll always rewrite this to f of g of 2, which means we're going to go into the g function. Everywhere we had an x, we're going to plug in 2. So that means we're going to say 4 over 2 minus 1, which is 4 over 1, which is 4. So now we're going to find f of 4. Well, that means we go into the f function. Everywhere we had an x, we're plugging in 4. So we would get 8 minus 1, which is 7. B part, g of f of negative 3. That means g of f of negative 3. So we're going to start on the inside and find f of negative 3, which means 2 times negative 3 minus 1 because we're going into the f function this time, which would give us negative 6 minus 1 is negative 7. Then we're going to substitute that in for g. So we would get g of negative 7. So we go back into our g formula, 4 over negative 7 minus 1, which would be 4 over negative 8, which would be negative 1 half. So g of f of negative 3 is negative 1 half. All right, now objective 4, finding composite functions. This time we're doing the function composition, but we don't have the numbers to substitute in. So g of f of x, again that means g of f of x, which means we're going to start with our g function. Everywhere we had an x, we're going to plug in f of x. f of x is 4x plus 1, so we're, we're going to substitute 4x plus 1 for x. So we would get 2 times 4x plus 1 squared plus 5 times 4x plus 1. Now remember this is the tricky part. 4x plus 1 squared means 4x plus 1 times itself, and then you're going to have to FOIL it out. So we would get 16x squared plus 4x plus 4x, which would be plus 8x plus 1, plus 5 times 4x plus 1. So when we simplify that, we would get 32x squared plus 16x plus 2 plus 20x plus 5. Combining like terms, we would get 32x squared plus 36x plus 7. Now B part says find f of g of x, which means we're going to do f of g of x, which means we're going to start with our f function, 4x plus 1. Everywhere we had an x, we're going to plug in g of x. So that would be 4 times 2x squared plus 5x plus 1. Now simplifying this one, it's a lot easier. We'd get 8x squared plus 20x plus 1. Notice, again, that f of g does not equal g of f. C part says discuss the domains. Well, the domain of f was all real numbers. The domain of g is all real numbers. Because we have no fractions, no square roots, or no applications, the domain of f of g and g of f is going to be all real numbers. Objective 5, applications dealing with cost, revenue, and profit. 
the cost function C of X represents the cost to produce X units. This is usually a fixed cost plus a variable cost. C of X equals MX plus B, where B is the fixed cost and M represents the cost per item. The revenue function R of X represents the revenue or the income from selling X units. The revenue function R of X is equal to P of X, where P is the price per item and X is the number that you sell. And also the profit function P of X represents the profit from selling X items. It is found by subtracting the cost from the revenue. If you'll think of these in terms of real life, the cost function is how much money you are paying out. The revenue is how much money you're bringing in. So the profit is how much you're bringing in minus how much you're paying out. Let's do an example. Suppose that a businessman invests $1,500 as his fixed cost in a new venture that produces and sells a device that makes programming a VCR easier. Each device costs $100 to manufacture. Write a linear cost function with X equal to the quantity produced. Well, your cost function is going to be the variable cost. It costs $100 to make each device. So it's going to be 100 times X plus your initial investment of $1,500. So your cost function looks like this, meaning if you produce one item, the cost is $1,600. If you produce two items, the cost is $1,700, and so forth. The second piece is give the profit function for each item. Well, I think in terms to do profit function, we need to know that the revenue, let's say that each device is going to sell for $200. Okay, they're going to have to give us that. So our revenue function would be 200x. So when we do our profit function, it's the amount we bring in, which is revenue, minus the amount we pay out. So it's going to be 200x minus this whole cost function, which is going to be 200x minus 100x minus 1500 so our profit function is going to be 100x minus 1500. And then the last piece is find the profit from selling 200 devices. Well, let's say we go into our profit function. That means we are looking for P of 200. So that would be 100 times 200 minus 1500, which would be 20,000 minus 1500 which would be $18,500 if we sold 200 of these items. Okay, let's do an example. In the figures below, F computes the cubic feet of water in a pool after X days and G converts the cubic feet to gallons. Notice the first graph we have the number of days on the bottom and we have the cubic feet down the left hand side. The second graph, we've got our cubic feet on the bottom and we've got the number of gallons down the left hand side. So part A says, find the gallons of water in the pool after two days. Well, because we're looking for the number of gallons, that's the G function. So that means we're gonna do G of, when you're looking for the gallons, you need cubic feet. Well, we don't know what the cubic feet are until we know how many days. So what we've got to do is we've got to go back. First thing is find F of two to compute the number of cubic feet. Once we know that, then we're going to substitute it into the G formula. So F of two means find the cubic feet of water after two days. So if you go back to your first graph, go over to two days, you go up and you notice that 
two days means 4,000 cubic feet of water. So now you want to find the number of gallons given that the cubic feet was 4,000. So when you come over to your second graph, you go over to 4,000. When you go up to your G function, you notice it was 40,000. So using the two graphs, we know that after two days, there will be 40,000 gallons of water in the pool. B part says interpret G of F of X. G of F is the number of gallons of water in the pool after X days. Okay, you are now ready to do the homework for Module 9, Topic 9.1 in my math lab. Let us know if you have any questions.